Hello everyone! So today I have a very special guest. This is Katie Morton. She is a licensed therapist and she is here to help me kick off a new series that I'm going to call Tea Break, where we can all gather together and drink some tea and talk about some of the harder parts of grad school. So I think that this would be a great way for us to sort of come together as a community and chat about these things. And one of the first things I want to talk about is imposter syndrome. I think this is something that's going to come up a lot in these kinds of videos and is certainly coming up a lot for me in grad school. So I really wanted to get off on a solid footing with Katie so that we can sort of know what we're dealing with before we head in. So thank you so much for coming. Yeah, thanks for having me. So to start it off so you kind of know where we're going with this and how we're going to describe it, I'm going to start by describing what imposter syndrome is. And I want to also start out by saying that it's not a diagnosable DSM-driven mental disorder. Okay. However, it is something that can lead to mental disorders and it's something that is really common. So what imposter syndrome is, is when we as individuals struggle to internalize any kind of praise or accomplishment. Meaning that we kind of feel like an imposter or like a phony in our own life. No matter how hard we've worked or how much we've done, we're like, no, 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 I, I didn't do that and I really didn't do that that well. Or like, no, 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 I'm not an expert. I, I just read this so, and we try to discredit all of the work that we've done. So that in a you know, nutshell is what imposter syndrome is. And I think that that definitely resonates at least with me and I feel like a lot of grad students at the moment where every time I mess something up a little bit or I don't know something that's happening in a talk, I just sort of get this feeling that, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm not smart enough to be here, I shouldn't be here, they let me in by mistake, what am I doing here, I don't know what I'm doing, and I feel like that feeling just keeps coming back and it's helpful for me to know that it has a name and that name <laughs> is imposter syndrome, but that doesn't mean that it goes away. No, and um, I have even had some personal experience myself with, um, I was at VidCon, which is a big conference for YouTubers like ourselves, and I was on a panel, and the panel name was Responsibilities of Being a Health Expert. And the person who was moderating the panel asked us all, like, you know, do you feel like you, you take ownership over that title, that you're a health expert? And we were all like, ugh, it, like <laughs> squirmed, we felt uncomfortable, and I remember particularly thinking, I'm going to sound like an asshole if I say I'm an expert because I've literally only been licensed for like two years, you know? And so we negated it, all of us except for one girl, we all negated it. Yeah. And it, and oftentimes when people will comment and say, we well, you know that was such a great video and I didn't even know and that's such great advice, I'll be like, yeah, but you know, I just like researched it and it, it's not right. me, it's somebody else. I didn't find it. Almost like I wound up in, <laughs> in my position like by happenstance. Yes. Surprise! <laughs> Just accidentally here. Exactly. Yeah, I, I definitely relate to that feeling a lot when, you know, when people come to me asking for genetics thoughts or advice and I'm like, well, I, I'm still in school. I don't know if I'm you an said expert that to yet. Me. I did. When I, I first did. met her, I had her on, uh, we did a video on my channel about the genetics of eating disorders and I had talked to her about it. She's like, but I'm still in school. Yeah. And I think I argued back and was like, no, yeah, but like, did. I don't know anything about that. And that's amazing. And you're at an amazing school and doing a great thing. And, so it's interesting how we can see it in other people, but we can't see it in ourselves. Right. And the, the great thing to know, I guess, and one of the main motivations of my channel is to let people know that they're not alone. And through a bunch of different research studies, um, they followed a lot of women because it tends to be more common in women, which that's a whole nother video. Yep. Um, but they found that those who go into higher education and those who go into um, intense career paths, over 70% of them struggle with imposter syndrome. Wow. And the reason that I think it keeps happening is because of the whole nature of imposter syndrome. So they say that most people feel it at some point. You start a new job, you don't really know, mm -hmm. and even though you might do something right, when someone's like, oh, you did that great, you're like, oh, I don't know, I'm so, ooh. And so you don't feel secure, like you can't accept the praise and the achievement. So we can't accept it, and then we work really hard, and even harder because we're like, oh, we're receiving this praise, I need to work harder, I need to earn it. So we work harder, 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 and then we get more praise. And we work harder again, and we feel it, and the, it just goes round and round and round. What we know mental health-wise is that it's very common, and people don't get treatment. And if we don't get treatment because we think, oh, it's normal, I just, I'm not good at this, I don't know, and we don't really think anything's wrong, it ends up leading to a lot of shame and doubt, and depression and anxiety. 
And so the things that you can do... Yes, tell, please tell me what to do. Because <laughs> I'm sure that you felt... I have, of course. I, I think that most grad students have at some point. And especially yeah. since you said 70%, that's mm -hmm. a huge percentage of yeah. people. I actually double-checked that because I thought it was a lie. <laughs> but it's true. Um, so what they say is, if we're experiencing this kind of feeling, these kinds of thoughts, the best thing you can do is uh, see a CBT therapist. Mm -hmm. Now, CBT therapy is cognitive behavioral therapy which really breaks that cycle because the whole premise around CBT is like we have these firmly held beliefs like I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, I, I somehow got in here, I don't know how, I snuck in the back door <laughs> <laughs> and then we have those thoughts because of those beliefs and then we act out of it. So then we work harder or we put ourselves down or people say you're so amazing, you're a geneticist, that's awesome and we're like no, 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 no and it goes round and round. Right. And CBT works to stop that okay. and interrupt those thoughts and instead kind of interject with positive, good, healthy, I'm working hard and I deserve it kind of thoughts. And they also talk about coherence therapy. And I'm reading my notes, um, coherence therapy. I personally don't do it. It's very similar to CBT. It's not something that I specialize in if you want to research it. Sounds Go good. for it. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Well, thank you so much for joining yeah. me for this video. I think that this is a great way to get people started off on sort of, I think, recognizing that this is something that affects such a huge percentage of people mm -hmm. and also how to deal with it and how to cope with it and how to break out of this imposter syndrome yeah. cycle. Yeah, thanks for having so me. Thank you so much. And before we go, what, what kind of tea are you drinking? Oh, uh, mine is Twinnings. Fresh and fruity strawberry mango. Oh, and mine is the fresh and fruity blackcurrant ginseng and vanilla. Mm -hmm. So we'll see what we have to... Very good. Yes. I'm sure there will be many different teas over the course <laughs> of this series. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Make sure to check out the video that we made on Katie's channel where I talk about eating disorder genetics by clicking over that away, over there. And while you're there, make sure to subscribe. She makes amazing mental health videos for grad students and beyond. I'd ask Alex to do a little bit of research for us to figure it out because I know from my research that we have an idea of maybe where eating disorders come from and, you know, since she has all this education backing her up, um, tell us a little bit about what you found for us. And I was like, the tea! Yeah.